Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and this week we are looking at another series that I loved in high school and have reread. So this week we are looking at the Georgia Nicholson series by Louise Renison. Um, I said in one of my earlier videos that I actually read 10 books by her last year, and that was the entirety of this series. It's just taken me a little while to get the video up, ready to go, whatever. So I have six of the books here, and the other four, um, two are on their way to me, and the other two I just don't have yet. So I borrowed a lot of these from the library and read them like on my Kindle between Christmas and New Year. And I've read this series probably from when I was like early in high school or in middle school up to like when the last book came out, which I think I was like a junior or senior in high school. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was hilarious. And I still think that like I read it. I flew through this series. I thought it was so much fun. So we are following a teenage girl named Georgia and all of her friends she is writing in a diary and it's all written in a diary format which i enjoy they're all less than 300 pages and it's just so so funny so they're in england um i grew up in louisiana right in the middle of the state knew her fun and it was so different than well i didn't realize at the time but like as i was reading these it's just so different so I did go ahead and try to put on some makeup that was reminiscent of my high school years, which is why I have on blue eyeshadow and have like wet my waterline a little bit. Uh, I tried to wear like a little top that would make Georgia Nicholson proud. So we're making an effort here, even though you can't actually see this top, but that's okay. We're making an effort here and that's what counts. So like I said, 10 bucks, which you might think is gonna make this like the longest video ever, but I don't think so because a lot of them are not that long so I'll just tell you the titles of the books and then we'll kind of get into what happened and my thoughts and everything so we have what Angus Thongs and Full Frontal mm, Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging is book one and then on the bright side I'm now the girlfriend of a sex god book two book three is Knocked Out by My Nunga Nungas and then Book four is Dancing in My Nutty Pants. Book five is Away Laughing on a Fast Camel. Book six is And Then He Ate My Boy in Trancers. Um, book seven is Startled by His Furry Shorts. Book eight, Love is a Mini Trousered Thing. Book nine, Stop in the Name of Pants. And book ten, Are Those My Bazoomas I See Before Me? The light reflects really badly off of these very shiny covers. So we open up let's see if I can flip this whole stack back over because that was not my smartest move um, anyway so basically we are following Georgia she is 14 at the opening um, and then it mentions way later on that she's 15 but I feel like it was probably like ages 14 to 16 so like probably a freshman to like a sophomore in high school even though she doesn't really change um, grades in the book in any of the books she doesn't change grades and it really doesn't mention ages they don't really celebrate birthdays so I guess that's to make sure they stay kind of the same age to keep it in that same age range of interest anyway so we clearly open with book one Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging we meet Georgia we meet the Ace Gang which is her group of friends Jazz, Rosie, Ellen, Jules, Mabs and then we also meet her family so her mom and dad who she calls muddy and Vaddy, and then her cat angus who we see here angus is probably part scottish wildcat part domestic tabby and then her little sister libby so it's a lot of family stuff but also they are getting ready to go back to school jazz meets this guy named tom that she has a crush on and georgia meets tom's older brother robbie so robbie is called the sex god and georgia really likes him he's a couple years older and he's kind of seeing this girl at her school called wet Lindsay. so they're like going to his shows he's in a band called the stiff dylans super fun um they finally get together and on the bright side, I am now the girlfriend of Sex God because clearly, so they finally get together and we're like, oh, cool. Okay. Everything's going to be fine. But of course, that's not how it works as usual. And Georgia and Robbie kind of split up and he suggests that she date this guy called Dave the, Dave the Laugh. So that is where Dave comes in and Dave plays a major part in the rest of the books. And I really like Dave from the beginning. He's really funny. Robbie is quite serious and Georgia's like doesn't she's not like comfortable around Robbie I guess just because he's older and he's like in a band and I guess more experienced so we don't ever really deal with any of that but 
Dave is great. He's her age. He's a lot of fun. He's really funny. He's really sweet. Gives her like gifts and chocolates and all kinds of things like that. I'm team Dave from the start, really. So she's like dating Robbie, seeing Dave, whatever. And then Robbie goes to New Zealand to, she says like snog marsupials, but I don't know, to work on like an eco farm or something. He goes to New Zealand. He's quite environmentally conscious. And she even talks about in a lot of these, like in his songs, they're just like not fun. They're like very sad and depressing. So Massimo comes in. Massimo is Italian American and he is the new lead singer of the Sif Dylans to replace Robbie. So he is called the Love God and Georgia absolutely loves him. Massimo is much more experienced um, than Georgia, clearly. We can kind of tell that from the onset. And of course, Lindsay, wet Lindsay, also just loves Massimo. So whatever. So Georgia and Masmo do a little bit of a will they won't they type thing um, in a way laughing on a fast camel. They actually go to America. Georgia goes to Memphis. Masmo is in Manhattan and she's like calling everyone with his last name in Manhattan and talking to all of these random people. It's so funny. They kind of get together um, but Dave is always there and Georgia always has a great time with Dave and she's always accidentally kissing Dave and at one point later on Dave and Masmo kind of like almost get into a fight because of her and she stops it but Massimo's like I don't think that you're serious about us so and then in what is it love is a mini trouser thing they go on this camping trip and Dave and the guys come um and like camp down the river and the girls go to their tent and Georgia and Dave really have a moment and it's one of those things where, like, we know that this is going to be a turning point, but she still is like, oh, love Massimo, and Dave actually has a girlfriend as well, but then we kind of move to, they're having, like, this, um, like, school play, and Dave is always there as well, this is where, like, Dave and Massimo really come to a head, and also, I sobbed during this one, Angus gets hit by a car, but he's okay, like, I feel like I have to say, like, he is okay, and clearly this book came out, like, Let's see if I can find the publication date. <laughs> um, 2008, this book came out, so, like, I'm not really giving anything away, uh, but Angus is fine. Angus also has a son called Cross-Eyed Gordy, who, like, comes to live with him as well because they adopted them from he, they adopted him from the people across the road because they have a cat and Naomi, her name is Naomi <laughs> and they got pregnant and it's Angus's kittens so this one is kind of heart-wrenching there were a lot of things where I was just like really heartbroken during this one I was really worried about Angus I was like sitting in my parents house just like sobbing um which was super fun and then we kind of move on to the last uh, couple of we move on to the last book, of course, and they are getting ready to put on Romeo and Juliet at school. Dave and um, company are helping with like the lights and all of this stuff, and Massimo is coming to see it, and this is kind of, we know that everything is going to come to a head here. I think it's a really satisfying conclusion. I really, really, really enjoyed the way that it ended, but I would have liked to see more, honestly. Like, I know that there is, like, another book. It's called How to Make Any Twit Fall in Love with You, and it's Georgia and her cousin Tallulah. Tallulah is, like, the star of the next series. So if I ever read that series, then I will read um, How to Make Any Twit Fall in Love with You. But this is the end, and it is, you know, a really good conclusion. Really, it is. It's happy. Like, you get what you want, I feel like. But, again, could have read more. So all in all, I thought the series was so much fun. Um, things are so different for them in England. So at like 14, they're able to like go to town kind of, I guess they live in town, but they walk to school, they go to like the shops, they like walk to town and stuff. So it doesn't say exactly where she lives, but they they have a lot of freedom. And when I was 14, really the whole time I was in high school, like we don't have or where I grew up, I'm sure some places do, like, on Gilmore Girls, but, like, where I grew up, there was not, like, a main street in town. I mean, there was a town called Main Street that was probably 15 miles from my house, so I grew up in a military base, but it was a small base, so the closest thing to us was Walmart, and it was one mile from my front door to Walmart, um, and, I mean, yeah, we walked there a couple times, but it was not like this, so they have so much freedom. They go to clubs, 
Um, and it doesn't really say if they're teen clubs or if they're just able to get into clubs because you can drink in the UK at 18. But they're going into clubs. They're not drinking or anything like that. But they are going to clubs and they're doing stuff that like at 14 and 15 I would have never ever been able to do so it's so interesting to see like the differences in freedom between like Americans and other people because in America you are very much not able to do things like that partly probably because a lot of cities in America are considered quite dangerous but also because like things are far like you couldn't just walk from where I lived and I lived in I mean there were probably like 50,000 people so it wasn't huge um, like in comparison to somewhere like Dallas, it's quite small, but you, that freedom was not there. Um, you don't get that type of freedom until you have a car. And then like that's a whole different beast anyway. So I thought that was really interesting. I also think it's really interesting like they have a snogging scale that goes from basically like holding hands to like everything. So it's like 10 and they throw in a couple of other things, but um, really for the most part like Georgia our main character never goes further than kissing which there's nothing wrong with that I just like think that it's interesting because so often you get these high school romances where like at 15 or 16 like they are doing it all so that is probably I think the time um maybe in 2000 you know seven or whatever that just wasn't a thing I they do mention like some of the other girls doing a little bit more but it's not it's nothing that's like they're not having sex so I thought that was interesting as well I do think that it's funny they kind of make up their own languages and they're always doing like disco dancing things they even like get up on stage at a club and do all of these dances it's so much fun but like it's so different I don't feel like I see a lot of like teen or YA books coming out now that are like this um, quite like normal in a way like they're just living their lives and ridiculous things might happen to them but like they're just living their lives um, without just a ton of backstabbing or even really a ton of drama like in Georgia's head things are very dramatic but as a whole like you know it's not as bad as like what you read today so I'm not sure like I don't read a lot of teen books I guess from this time I mean like the ones that I'm rereading but I don't remember like reading a ton of them that were so dramatic like they are today like if you pick up a lot of books today there's so much drama and that's kind of what fuels the plot is just all of the drama um and this is not that but I did really enjoy them I loved them like this whole series is like probably four and a half to five stars for me like I absolutely loved it I rated all of these four or five stars because it was so good it's like a little trip down memory lane so nostalgic and just so light and easy to read like even the parts where things are sad or things are dramatic like there's always a light at the end of that tunnel and I just absolutely adored these I loved rereading these I had so much fun it was laughing out loud it was just great and I'm so glad that I picked these back up and I'm going to continue to get the rest of like the collection <laughs> and honestly I do have at least one of the next series the Tallulah Casey series on my phone um because I mean god I've had like I've used iBooks since college so like I have them you know but um I don't know when or if I'll be rereading all of those but like I said this is just such a good experience I love the way that she writes Louise Bredesen has since passed away um but I absolutely love the way that she writes it definitely just transports you back to a different time and it's so nice and so light and really takes your mind off all the stress and everything. I loved it. So that is all that I have for you today. That is my thoughts on this other series. This one definitely held up so well. I think really all of the ones that I've been rereading have held up pretty well and I'm very happy about that. So I will see you guys later. Bye!